Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect, and defend against the abuse of NTFS alternate data streams. NTFS, the new technology file system, is, well, not so new anymore. It's the default file system for all modern versions of Windows. Files are stored as records within the master file table. Each record represents one file, and includes attributes such as the file name, when it was last modified, who owns the file, and what permissions apply, and so on. One of these attributes, called data, is the actual contents of the file. One of the less well-known features of NTFS, however, is that it's possible to assign multiple data attributes to each record. This idea was originally implemented so that Windows NT servers would be interoperable with Mac clients running the hierarchical file system, although it's since been used for other purposes. For example, Windows uses an alternate data stream to mark files from the internet as high risk. Here's a file I just downloaded from a website. Running dir with the slash r option shows an additional stream attached to this file called zone.identifier, containing 142 bytes of data. This tag is read by Windows when I try to run it, and triggers some additional checks on the safety of this file due to the dangers of running programs downloaded from the internet. In this case, I'm warned that the code doesn't have a valid digital signature. Note that if I tried to run a copy of this exact same code, which already existed on this device, and therefore doesn't have a zone identifier, there's no check and no warning. The code just runs. It's worth stressing that alternate data streams are a feature of NTFS, so if you copy a file with multiple streams to another NTFS folder or file system, those alternate data streams are maintained. However, if you copy the same file to a different file system, such as this FAT32 drive here, only the contents of the primary unnamed data stream is copied. It's a similar story if you try to upload or transfer a file through any other system which doesn't explicitly support alternate data streams. Alternate data streams provide an excellent way to hide information in files. Here I'm using the Windows command line to echo some content into a file's default unnamed stream, then some different content into a couple of alternate streams. Trying to examine the file contents with the type command, or via notepad, only reveals the content in the default stream. This is of course a great way of hiding information out of sight, uh, potentially very handy to an attacker who is collecting lots of sensitive information on a staging server in preparation for exfiltrating it out of a network. It's also worth noting that an alternate data stream can be applied to a directory, not just a file. An attacker could also embed malicious code, or an entire malicious executable, into a file which again otherwise looks benign. Here I'm adding a malicious executable payload as an alternate data stream to a text file. Despite this being several kilobytes big, the right-click properties still only reflect the 41 bytes of the original unnamed data stream. The alternate data stream can be executed in a couple of different ways. Here I'm making a call to the Windows Management Instrumentation command line tool. Task Manager confirms that this payload is now running. Sean Pierce's presentation from a recent SAN cybersecurity summit has a couple of other variations on this. Check out a link to his slides in the video description. As we saw in the intro, modern versions of Windows make it fairly easy to identify the existence of alternate data streams through the slash r option to dir. There's no command line tool to extract the contents of these streams though, so we have to switch to PowerShell. A number of PowerShell commands include the dash stream parameter in order to interact with alternate data streams. For example, using it with get item replicates the functionality we saw with dir slash r. It's also supported by getContent, providing a simple means to view the contents of an alternate data stream. Here we're viewing the contents of the various secret data streams in the otherwise innocent file. Having commands to detect the ad hoc use of alternate data streams is good for investigating an active incident, but not very practical for broader monitoring. Sysmon provides a couple of good options here to help. First, Event ID 15 is generated whenever an alternate data stream is created. Here's the entry from our insertion of the malicious payload into benign.txt. 
It records the name of the file, but not the name of the stream. Although, at least this is a good trigger for further investigation. Also, event ID number 1, process creation, does include an alternate data stream identifier if it's applicable. For example, here's the event generated from our earlier execution of the payload hidden inside benign.txt. Alternate data streams are a fundamental part of NTFS, so the only way to completely prevent their abuse is just to not use NTFS. But before you start reformatting all your drives with FAT32, bear in mind that NTFS comes with a bunch of other great capabilities, especially around access control and encryption, that you would lose if you regress back to FAT, leaving you in an overall worse security state. So just learn to live with alternate data streams put in place some sensible monitoring and alerting, and be aware that files may not always be what they seem. But you can always dig deeper with a simple dir slash r. And that about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like, and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting, and defending against the use of NTFS alternate data streams, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.